My name is Roman L.C. Martinez and I paint blind portraits. I'm from uh, Denver, Colorado originally and uh, I've been drawing since I could hold a pencil you know, and it's been, uh, it's been my way of connecting with people. You know, forever I was an only child and I you know, didn't learn a lot of socialization skills very early on. I'd always be on my own. and drawing constantly and then people started coming up to me when it was good and oh that's really good or like oh can you draw me or like oh that's you know you draw something as a kid and like oh that's my house or that's my dog or that's my you know that looks just like me that's my hair and uh, I realized that I could use my art to connect with people and I've been trying to do that you know up through high school you know and make friends that way or people would be like sort of uh, you know impressed or they'd want to like try to draw with me and uh, that would be what I was known for in school. And that's just how I've identified as a person for basically my whole life has been just, uh, I'm, the, I'm the artistic one, or I'm, I'm the, you know, I'm that guy who draws things. And uh, two and a half years ago, I'd been drawing things for so long and trying to get so good at drawing things for so long, be very technically proficient, that my work started to get really stiff and I, it didn't have a lot of motion in it, it didn't feel lively again, and I wasn't connecting to people anymore. I was basically just drawing to be good at drawing, right? Or to like make it look as perfect as possible. And it was all very technical. And I decided that I needed to loosen up, like I needed a release. I needed a break from this very narrow way of thinking. So uh, my friend Paul, who I went to art school with, we were at a coffee shop, me, Paul, my wife, and I just looked at him and said, you know what, like, I'm gonna draw you, just I need to loosen up, I gotta get out of my head, just uh, look at me real quick and I'm gonna draw you, and, uh, and I'm not gonna look down, that's it. And so I'm just like drawing him, and because I can't see what I'm doing, I have nothing to like really focus on, so I just started asking him questions and stuff, talking to him, he's my friend, I've known him for years. And uh, we're just having a good time, and he's laughing, and I'm drawing, and before I know it, I'm like, oh, I think I'm done drawing. And I looked down, and that was the first uh, blind portrait drawing that I did and it looked so interesting it looked just like him but of course because it's blind everything was shifted and like refocused but it had his energy and like he was laughing while we were talking so he was laughing in the drawing and he was wearing a certain hat and you could see that hat like kind of moving off of his head I was like man that was really fun like also it brought all this fun back into my work because um you know, I went to art school and I, you know, worked 17 hour days doing master copies and all the stuff, you know, trying to be the next, you know, um, Rubens, you know, trying to be the next like master painter. And eventually that got to a point where that wasn't fun or exhilarating anymore. That was just very dedicated and very focused and very controlled. And when I did this portrait of my friend, it was very loose and fun and we had a great time. And then like he was really into it and we were laughing. So then I turned over to my wife and I was like, hey, I'll draw you. I was like, okay. And so then we had a good time laughing and drawing and it ended up looking like her. You know, it had like her hair just looked like so interesting. And I was like, okay, maybe this is something I'll keep doing to stay loose because I feel good now. Like I feel like really excited. And uh, then every day when I'd go draw, I'd go to coffee shops and draw. Uh, I would just, you know, start with a blind portrait to warm myself up, you know, and get things going. Uh, and then people began to like them so much and I started enjoying doing them and I started like taking pictures of them, you know, with their blind portrait and you could see how it looked like them or how it emulated their energy and then started doing that enough and then, then people started asking me like, oh, I see that you do these blind portraits, like, could you do one of me? Like, could we like, you know, hang out and do that? It's like, oh yeah, sure. And it just started picking up steam and I realized Whenever I do the blind portrait to warm up or be with somebody, I was having a great time. And whenever I'd go back to my technical work, I was like, oh, this feels just exhausting and hard. So I always tell other people to follow what they're passionate about and that that's what they can have a unique contribution to our world by following what they're passionate about because they will pour themselves into it and do it you know, better than anybody else. So I give that advice to other people. I was like, why am I not taking that for myself? Why am I forcing myself to be Rubens? You know what I mean? Why am I forcing myself to be something that I guess 
you know, it is got so much resistance against me. You know, I can take all my art training, all my background of being very technically skilled and loosen it up and connect with people. And I have something that's uniquely mine. So I followed that. And now I've been doing it for about two and a half years. And it evolved from little line drawings to, you know, Sharpie marker drawings to then I started doing them on big newsprint pads and like going wild. And then now what I do is I take those drawings that I share intimate moments with people and draw them while they talk to me without ever looking down. And then I take that drawing, the spirit of that movement, the energy and the connection we had right then, and I transfer that onto a canvas. And then I paint it in oil. And then it takes on a whole new you know, personality. The stuff takes on like a grandeur. And when people come see the work, they see people that are my friends or my wife or people that I met you know, on the streets in Athens or people that I met at a wedding you know, in Wyoming or just people from all over the world and you get to see their faces and you don't know them, but you, I think you know more about them looking at these than you would if I showed you a picture of them. You get a sense of their energy, you get a sense of their, like, their vibe, you see the things that are iconic about them because that's what I focus on when I draw. You know, if I think you have a really interesting beard, I'm going to spend some time on that beard and make it really like cool and bizarre. Or if you've got a very distinct hat or something, you know, I'm going to draw the hat. And so you're almost like a caricature. It brings out the things about you that are recognizable to other people while at the same time, because we're talking about something very, you know, deep and intellectual while I draw it, I'm bringing out the iconic characteristics of your personality too. So you've got your iconic visual structure and you've got the iconic pieces of, you know, your soul or your mind involved. And uh, that's why I like to do them. I was drawn to this style because it allows me to operate on an intuitive connection with people rather than to rely on my artistic ability. So with the art that I used to do, more illustrative work, it was very technical and I relied a lot on myself and pulling something from within me to try to put that onto paper. But when I do these blind portraits, when I work with people, I get to play off of their energy and I'll always ask something in the moment. I don't plan what I'll ask people before I draw them. I sit with them, spend time with them, much like an interviewer, much like I'm being interviewed right now. You spend some time with people, you get to know a little bit about them, and then I think of a question and I try to let it come as naturally as possible. I don't try to force it or make it something deep or make it something fun. I just feel it. I ask the question. I don't force them to stay on topic with me. I don't force them to like, no, I asked you, you know, yesterday I drew a blind portrait and I asked the question, did you have a nightlight when you were a kid and how do you feel about nightlights now? And that led to a conversation about, uh, you know, paranormal experiences and fear of going to sleep for fear of death. And it, get, it got very deep, but the question itself is very, you know, on the surface, very light. And I like to open that door so that people, if they're coming from a very deep resonant space, they can share that with me. Or if they prefer to keep it light, or if they've been having a rough week and they want to, you know, experience some joy, they can bring that in. So I try to leave it very open. And once I open the door to their energy and to what they want to share with me, then the drawing doesn't become about me being technically proficient. It doesn't be, become about me being, you know, in my own head. It's about me reacting to somebody else, listening to them, taking their energy and turning that into art. And uh, I've done over 250 drawings right now of different people. So I've got 250 people that I've drawn blind portraits of. And each one brought something uniquely different. Each experience felt very different for me drawing it. And it's that sort of constant change and constant influx of energy that makes it so that I could do millions. I mean, I could just, I never get tired of it. You know, um, I did a gallery show and in the same night drew 30 different people. I had, you know, people come up to me and sit down. Okay, ask the question, get deep, make a connection, draw. 
We did 30 of them, and by the end of the night, I wasn't tired of drawing. I wanted to keep drawing more people, but they kicked us out. We were there so late we got kicked out. You know, it was like, okay, you got to <laughs> cut it off, guys. Uh, and, you know, we went for a drink afterward, and I thought the only thing that happened was my marker ran out of ink. You know, if my, I could have. I outlasted my Sharpie, you know? Like, I could keep going and going and going. And so uh, that's what really appeals to me about this work is that it, it always feels like a way to make a genuine human connection, and I will always want to do that you know, for the rest of my life. That's what I want to pursue. So, um, yeah, one part art, one part interview. You know, what about my art sets me free? This work takes me out of my head. It makes me unselfish. It makes me, it puts me in a place where I can be very giving to other people. And that's what I love to do. But I get so wrapped up in my own artistic dilemmas or my own problems every day that I have a hard time seeing other people and I get very goal oriented and I get very focused and I get very narrow. And I can only see a very small beam of light. But when I shine that beam of light on someone else, it, it brightens my environment. It brightens my life. It takes me out of this like self-centric view of the world. And it reminds me that I'm connected to everybody. And that since m my biggest desire in life is just to help other people, to make them feel good, to make them feel valued, to make them feel like their life has meaning and grandeur and that they are, you know, um, for lack of a better way to phrase it, that they're the hero of their own stories, you know, for me to be able to draw somebody, turn it to them and show them things about themselves that they want to believe about themselves, things they feel are really true about themselves, giving somebody that gift, you know, um, means a lot to me when I can see that it means a lot to them. And sometimes I'll draw people and it will reveal things about them that they weren't aware of about themselves. And so I can give people the gift of awareness. I drew a mother who was very happy and like, you know, very like animated while we were drawing and she just answered an innocuous question, nothing to do with anything. Uh, and then I looked down at the drawing after it's done and uh, she looked extremely worried and her hands, she just had her hands on the table, but the way that I drew them when it was blind, her hands were like together and really like wrought and they looked really tense. And she was looking at me the whole time when I drew her, but then in the blind portrait she was looking down and looked very like nervous. So I showed it to her and I asked her like, what, why do you think that happened? You know, <laughs> like what is this? Like that wasn't at all what I got, you know, that wasn't the energy I was getting. And she said, I'm really, I am really like the whole time in my back of my mind while we've been doing all of this, I've just been really worried because my daughters are fighting with each other and and I just got a text from one of them and I'm really concerned that they're not going to repair this relationship. And so I was just worried about that the whole time while we're drawing. So it's those insights. Like if I can provide an insight to somebody and help them understand their world better, that means a lot to me. And uh, that's not something I can do in other areas of my life. <laughs> you know, so, so that's why I like to explore that through my art. Um, these blind portraits, as much as they're a uh, work of art and it's something that I try to do with a lot of professionalism, they're ultimately for me, so selfishly as a person, I just want an excuse to talk to people about deep things. I don't want to do small talk, you know, I don't want to sit and talk about like, oh, so, you know, what, what do you do and uh, how long have you been in LA, you know. I want to talk about, you know, what was your you know, favorite game that you used to play when you were a kid and like, did you have a best friend and like, did you ever break any bones? And if you did, like, how did you break your bones? I want to get into really human things with people. And so this allows me to sit down with a total stranger and because there's context built around it, I can cut right to something really deep and meaningful for them. And because they sit down with context, they're like, oh, I'm here with an artist, right? Then they are willing to give so much more. Because if you just sit down and some stranger asks you like something about your childhood, you're probably gonna be like, I'm, I'm busy, you know? But if you sit down with me, I don't look down at the paper, I just look at you the whole time. And I can't think of, for me personally, 
the last time somebody sat down for five minutes and just looked at me while I was talking and just focused on me and just wanted to know about me. And I think that giving that to people, you know, really helps them access things about themselves that they wouldn't otherwise. And, um, and as a result, you know, I get to collect a lot of meaningful experiences in my life and that's all I want anyway, <laughs> you know, uh, to feel like my life has meaning and to help other people feel like their life has meaning. So I just wanted to tell you a little story. These portraits, you know, I talked about it being my way to uh, connect with people, and cut through and really experience other people. Um, this was a guy that I met while I was in Athens. Um, he's a homeless man on the street. And uh, I walked by him. I had my sketchbook, you know, I got it in Greece, right? And I had my sketchbook, I had just gotten it and then walking by him and I had like felt this energy, you know, like maybe I should like, should go draw that guy, you know, I'm like on vacation and feeling like, well, he looks so interesting and is that gonna be weird? Am I gonna make him feel strange and make him feel like I'm, you know, taking advantage of him or something, you know, but I just tried to listen to my heart and my dad and my wife were walking down this hill in front of me and they had already like long since passed me because I had slowed down to look at this guy. I just ran up to them, but I was, I'll just be one minute, I'll be one minute. And so I ran back over to him I took my sketchbook. I sat down with him and I started trying to explain to him, you know, that I wanted to draw his picture and I wanted to do this blind portrait process with him. And he didn't speak any English. So I'm like trying to explain some stuff and he just kind of like looks at me and he goes, I don't understand. And so, Part of me was was gonna go, okay, I just sorry, I'll see you later. But uh, then I thought, okay, if I can if I can figure out a way to sh communicate to him what I'm doing, maybe he'll still be interested, maybe I can draw him. So looked at him and I said, like, uh, you know, like I and I had my, you know, I, I draw, you know, you. Look, I draw you. And then I flipped through and I showed him all the different, you know, portraits of people that I'd done. And I pulled up my phone and I showed him pictures of people with their portraits and I was like, what do you, you know, I think like this. And, uh, and he looked at me and he went, like, yeah. And then he like stood very still. And uh, so I have no way to explain to him that I, you know, draw without looking. I didn't want to get into all this, right? I was just, uh, I'll draw him. So I looked right at him. And again, that eye contact is something that people don't get for a long, you know, someone looking at you for a couple of minutes directly, like you don't get that. So looked right into his eyes and I started drawing him without looking down. And I could see him looking at me and was wondering why I wasn't looking down and then he kept looking at the paper and he was like interested and I could see he was like kind of excited about it. And then uh, you know, I turned it over and showed him and he looked at me and he went. And it was the one of the best experiences that I've ever had in my life, let alone in my blind portrait, you know, activities. And uh, so this is the, this is how it turned out. This is, this is him. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that with you. Kind of cool thing. Uh, as far as my materials. So the materials that I use, uh, a sketchbook and uh, Sharpies. I sit down with people and just my sketchbook and my Sharpie. Draw them without ever looking down. And uh, that begins the process. And then once I decide that I want to paint a larger version of that, I'll take a projector and I'll project the original sketch with all of the original energy and intent and you know fast nature of the initial sketch. I'll project it onto the canvas and I will trace the lines on the canvas with a pencil to make sure that all the lines are accurate to what I did while I was in that moment. Uh, and then after that, I use just straight black oil paint uh, mixed with a little bit of liquid to you know, help it you know, go smoother. And uh, I will mix those together in a jar like this. And uh, then I will take, what is this? A number 12 hog hair brush and I will use this to faithfully trace over the lines that I did while I was there talking to the person and uh, yeah I always try to do very broad energetic 
strokes while I'm painting so that I can keep the life that I had in the initial sketch when I was just moving my hand very freely, you know, to try to replicate that with paint. It's like, it's not just a trace and replace process. It's a, it's almost like the art takes on a whole new spiritual process when I have to put it down in oil paint because I want to capture that mood. And I try to think about what I talked to with the person while I was there. You know, I try to revisit that experience. And uh, sometimes I'll have a little bit of wine or something while I'm doing it too, just to kind of make sure I'm loosened up and I'm not getting too technical because that's why I started doing these in the first place was that I didn't stay rigid. I wanted to be fluid. I wanted to be experiential and not in my head. So sometimes I'll have some wine or something and just and go through. And uh, that's the whole process. And then I guess the only other piece of that is the, the canvas itself, which is just, you know, this one's 38 by 46 primed canvas ready to go. I don't stretch my own canvases because I am terrible at working with my hands in any capacity other than art. So I think that's about it. That's all I use. Yeah. My website is romanlcmartinez.com. My Instagram handle is the same thing. My full name is Roman Suila Martinez and that's my email if you want to get in touch with me. Uh, I want to say thanks to Fausto for making this happen and allowing me to talk about myself at length and my art at length. Any opportunity to talk, I will take it. <laughs> uh, thank you to everyone who sat down with me over the past 250 blind portraits and really shared some of their soul with me, some of their heart, their time. Thank you to all of them. Thank you to Paul Juno for being the first subject of a blind portrait, but also for being an artist who really inspires me every day with his approach to his, his art and his spirit. He really encouraged me to loosen up and to feel comfortable with myself and my art. Uh, and, and lastly, thank you to my wife, Caitlin, for always inspiring me in every facet of my art since I was even trained in, in any sort of sense. She has kept me in line with my spiritual self and helped me not get lost in the detail of trying to be something that I'm not, you know. She's kept me very honest and focused with myself and without her insight into how to interact with people and how to empathize with people and how to really see people for who they are, none of any of this would have any meaning. This would just be a warm-up exercise for art. This wouldn't be the experience that it is. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks, Fausto. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.